We've all been there. We spent 200 pounds blindly going for the latest and greatest apart from the Marley. It's in a nice red bottle. It has an interesting note breakdown. You're gonna go and blind buy apart from the Marley Callan without ever smelling it. You get it in your house, you open it up, you get excited by the packaging, you give it a nice little spray, nice atomizer, and then it smells like ass and you are in financial ruin and the bailiff is coming for your property and you're out on the streets and you're smelling of intense black pepper and blood orange and you're crying. We've all been there, guys. We've all been there. I kid, I kid about Calan. I actually quite like that fragrance. It's not that bad, <laughs> but I have done very bad blind buys in the past. This is what this video is about. We've all been in that situation where we are convinced we're gonna love a fragrance. I did a previous video where I talked about fra fragrance blind buys that went well. I would say the majority of my blind buys, maybe 70% are pretty good. Um, I think that's quite a low score actually. I think a lot of you guys in the comments said like 80 or 90% of your blind buys go well. So I'm actually pretty bad at it, but <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys that about um, my fragrance blind buy regrets. Fragrances that just didn't work out for me. Um, maybe if we have a similar taste, you guys can see that some of these fragrance blind buys aren't very safe. It might deter you from buying without trying first. And that's a good thing about the online community. Nowadays, we can always try fragrances at the very least, or we can also just buy these fragrances really cheap. But all these fragrances were cheapies, so at least it's not too financially ruinous when you do blind buy them. So hopefully this video helps. Let's get started. And number one, it's sort of a cheat. This is a discontinued fragrance, but I blind bought a discontinued fragrance called Pacoraban Invictus Aqua 2016. The original Pacoraban uh, Invictus Aqua. Because if you guys remember a few years back, this fragrance just kept, kept getting hyped, hyped, hyped all the time. A long lasting, salty, aquatic fragrance. And I learned a very hard lesson with this fragrance. Okay, so. It's not a bad fragrance, it's a nice fragrance. Um, I got it at a reasonable price, a little bit higher price than I'd like to spend, but you know, not a, a terrible price for a discontinued scent. Um, I, don't have, I don't have the bottles for most of these fragrances, by the way, in this list. Um, like, I gave them away eventually, that just goes, goes to show. So, Aqua 2016, I thought was a nice fragrance. I liked Hawas by Rosace, I already had that fragrance. And I also bought uh, Legend Spirit 20, uh, by Mont Blanc, which is a fragrance that smells very similar to Aqua 2016. So these fragrances all quite, smell quite similar. I did a video on it, did a comparison. And I realized that a lot of discontinued fragrances, when you buy them, I bought other discontinued fragrances as well, and also been disappointed. You will get a lot of hype for these discontinued fragrances that actually, if these fragrances weren't discontinued, they were available, a lot of people would not actually like them that much, in my opinion. I think, I do think, you know, the internet goes a bit crazy that when something becomes discontinued, the price just hikes up super high when um, not all the time is it worth it. A lot of the times, actually, a fragrance gets too much hype just because it is discontinued. I think for designer fragrances anyways, for most of the time for designer fragrances, you're not going to get spectacular scent profiles. You're not going to get something that really blows you away. Maybe there are some that discontinued are great, like Bulgari Aqua Amara, I stand by that fragrance. But you know, something like an, an Invictus fragrance, most of the time, you know, these, these mainstream brands, most of the time you're not gonna get something spectacular. So that's my lesson learned, is don't fall for the hype for discontinued scents. It's not a bad scent though. Next up is this, the Labo Santal 33. I don't even know why I still have this bottle. I might do a little Labo buying guy, maybe I'll keep it for that, but Santal 33, it's famous. You probably know this fragrance. I think it's Americans who love this fragrance mainly. Santal 33, the Labo in general seems sort of like an overhyped brand as well. <laughs> They're very expensive for what they are. Santal 33, I just don't find this pleasant. I've owned this for a long time now, over a year, and I got a half full from like a Facebook group. This is the, this is the advantage of a Facebook group. It's like it's a nice, it's a nice concept. It's like a dry, woody pickle juice sandalwood. It's very interesting. It's very strong on the cedarwood. This is the thing. It's just a way too dry and harsh fragrance. And most of the fragrances I've tried from the Labo as, like, uh, as tester sprays, they have very weird style of perfumery, like very um, aroma chemical molecular based perfumery, very bright, a little bit hipster I'd say. I think if you're a hipster you might like this brand, but honestly Santal 33, I just don't find the scent profile very nice, but it's good performance, I'll give them that. Parfum de Marley's Darley. Not a bad fragrance again, uh, but I still regret getting this. I got it again from a Facebook group, so it was a reasonably priced bottle. But um, I kind of find this redundant. I don't ever reach for this. I got it because I like the idea of uh, this being a clone. Well, it's like a very heavily inspired fragrance by Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal. 
I miss the old Lamal of having strong performance. I always like the kind of, these kind of fragrances that gave that vibe. I bought Amouage Reflection Man. I got this fragrance. I had Prada Luna as a sport at one point as well. And Darley is nice. It's like a powdery, fresher, more minty take on the original Lamal. So it's like a freshy mint barbershop scent. It doesn't smell niche at all though. Like, I don't think this is worthy of apart from the Marley price tag. It's a nice, clean, powdery freshness, but it kind of smells outdated. This still smells like it's, it, this, I think this was released in the 2000s. It smells like a 2000s fragrance. It smells outdated. It's kind of like a knockoff of Lamal. It's just not as good as Lamal, in my opinion. I should probably just wear that. Uh, this is fresher, it's not bad. You can wear this in the summertime. Not a bad scent, but like a lot of the fresher fragrances from the brand, apart from the Marley, I do not think it's worth the price tag. It smells, you know, maybe high-end designer, like a high-end designer price tag would be more suitable for this. Thierry Mugler's Pure Havan. Not Pure Malt, I love Pure Malt. This is why that's, this is still in my collection. Pure Havan got out. I got Pure Havan because a lot of people hyped it up. Like I said, it was sweet honey tobacco and it, com it made comparisons to Zerjov Naxos, the greatest tobacco fragrance ever made. I do not think that it holds a candle to Naxos. I really did not like um, Pure Havan. It was extremely synthetic, but not in a nice way. Like Pure Malt is synthetic as well, it's a whiskey fragrance. But like this, this fragrance I felt like was too sickly sweet, not the best blend, very synthetic. And just and when, I, when I owned, I already owned Naxos as well when I had it. So I just felt like I never needed to reach for it. In my opinion, again, it's another example of a discontinued scent that was not worth the hype in my opinion which is why you should always try these fragrances first. Maybe most people will like it, but for me, it wasn't a very good purchase. Guerlain's Vetiver, again, I don't have my bottle anymore, but this fragrance, back in the day, it was nice and cheap, okay? So it's not a bad fragrance, again, I got it for like 30 pounds, it's a nice cheapie that is fantastic for the price, don't get me wrong, Guerlain is not a bad house at all, but I just found that Vetiver was, does smell like it was a fragrance from the 70s, it's a very old school smoky vetiver vibe to it. It's a nice scent, very nice green, soapy, smoky, rugged, masculine, but it does smell like it from a different time. It's kind of like wearing Eau Sauvage nowadays. You're the kind of guy, okay, who's, who likes classical fragrances. Maybe you grew up with some of these scents. I like cr classic cologne style that men used to wear. Fair enough, more power to you. I don't think Guerlain's Vetiver can be found that cheap in general anymore. So it's really gonna be a phrase you should try first. It's not a bad scent, the perfumery is fantastic. I would have it in my collection more for a, a respect towards the classics. Guerlain Vetiver, you know, was, is a very classical, nicely done Vetiver back in, in, from that, that time era. So that's the, the reason to have it. It's kind of like having the original Eau Sauvage by Dior. Do you have it? more like an homage to the classics rather than you know something you'd wear nowadays in my opinion. Aqua di Gio Absolute, I had like a big 125ml bottle of this stuff, uh, which again was not a bad fragrance, but I kind of felt like they took away way too much of the original Aqua di Gio DNA, it felt like that fragrance wasn't left in there at all, and it made it very bubblegum like uh, on lines of things like Invictus or Hawass, like it, it was a nice take on the bubblegum DNA, but I just didn't feel like it fitted into the Aqua di Gio line very much and I kind of felt like it, they were trying to impersonate something else instead of creating something that's unique for themselves. Not a bad scent, nice and long lasting, eight hours, good performer for a summertime fragrance. It's like a smooth, more mature take on the bubblegum DNA, but it just fell flat overall in my opinion. I felt like it was too forgettable, I never reached for it, so I had to give it away in the end. <laughs> and finally, Bentley for Men Intense. Oh, do I love to hate on this fragrance in this channel. This uh, was a disappointment. Um, like, I genuinely thought that this would be the safest, cheapy blind buy in the world. Like, so many people hyped it up. I love the note breakdown. I love the, you know, the perfumer is great as well. Uh, I think it was Natalie Lawson who made it. And I just thought, like, yeah, this is going to be a bargain. Other brands, other, other fragrances from the other car brands uh, has gone well. Like, I got Mercedes-Benz Cologne at one point. That was a very nice fragrance. That was, like, a very nice clone of Dior Cologne. I had um, Mercedes-Benz Club Black. Maybe it's Mercedes that do all the good fragrances. <laughs> Bentley, yeah, this fragrance. I ha had Bentley for Men Momentum Intense as well. That was a nice cheapie. But this Bentley for Men Intense smelled really weirdly dry, <laughs> like a, a dry, woody barrel uh, with a minimal amount of whiskey, a lot of leather, a surprising amount of leather. So I felt like it was more of a woody fragrance more than a, a boozy fragrance, like a lot of people said. Maybe it just didn't work on my skin, maybe, but like I had it and wore it many times. Uh, the performance was seemed okay at maybe eight hours with me, um, but it just wasn't meeting the descriptions that other people were giving it. I didn't think it just smelled that sexy, and I didn't really know when I would wear this. It smelled like an old man, like in his 40s, 
uh, we'll just kind of sit in this lounge chair, maybe sipping a whiskey, would wear something like that, um, maybe like a cowboy or something. Uh, I don't really know when I'd wear that. Like you know, for those kind of fragrances, like those classy boozy scents, you want something that's very nicely done. I felt like Bentley from Men Intense was quite synthetic. Uh, it wasn't st stand out at all. Like something like Killian's Angel Share is the, ki the right kind of fragrance to wear for that environment. Something like Jazz Club by Mason Margiela, that's the kind of fragrance you reach for. These are special occasions that you, <laughs> I don't know if you wanted a cheapy to do that kind of uh, performance or that kind of function for you. So. Uh, I was severely disappointed, but I might get another sample of it to try again, just because maybe I didn't give it enough tries. Although I think I did actually, <laughs> but maybe I'll give it another try, see if my nose has changed since then. Maybe I'll appreciate it more, but what do you guys think? Is Bentley from an intense disappointment? I, I did not feel that fragrance at all. That concludes the video, guys. What do you guys think? Do you have stories of your own about fragrance blind buys that went horribly wrong for you? Make sure to tell us all about them in the comments down below and uh, share your tragedies with us. It'll be very interesting to see. If you guys haven't watched the other videos as well, make sure to check out my video on fragrance blind buys that went well. That's a very good video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.